Good morning, family. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, 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 let me tell you something. It is nice to be able to minister from the comfort of our home, but it's so much cooler to be able to look out and see, even if you're in your cars, even if we're social distance, to be able to see some of the family. So, uh, so good morning, New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Good morning to our extended family on the internet. New Mount Zion, if y'all don't mind, honk your horns a little bit and let the internet know you're here. We out here. Oh, that's the best thing, making a joyful noise. So I'm David Collins. I'm the senior pastor of New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, and I am overjoyed to be here this morning. This is last Sunday before Christmas, and uh, we know, I know that at, Mission, at uh, New Mount Zion, we hadn't done communion in forever. It's been like a year, and uh, it's been so long since we've come together for worship like this. So we just thought it was important to do this. And hopefully we'll be able to do this more often, you know, maybe once or, you know, once a month or something until we can get through this pandemic. But the priority is your safety. The priority is that you be alive to praise him. Amen. So we don't want anyone uh, putting themselves under any undue risk. Um, everybody make sure if you're here that you're connected to 89.9 FM. That's how you're hearing us. And for everybody else, the same way that we're always connected. So I guess you could do both. There'll be a little delay, but do what you got to do. Amen. Amen. It is a good day. Ashley's over there on the ones and twos, way off in the corner. Mm -hmm. Elder Collins is way over there. She can't just reach over here and wave like normal. But uh, man, I'm excited. I pray that you guys are excited too. Amen. I love it. I love it. I love that. So why don't we, we're going to get right into the word of the Lord, you know. Um, this Sunday morning, that's what you've come here for, uh, and, and, and I'm excited for you to receive it. So, man, I'm excited. So let's pray together. God, thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being here for us. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for empowering us to do things that we never could do. This morning, God, I thank you for my church family. I thank you for the incredible men and women of New Mount Zion, God. I thank you for their love, their sacrifice, for their flexibility, for their desire to be close to you no matter what it takes. And I pray that you would award their faithfulness, Father, that you would show them grace, mercy, and favor in everything they do. Bless everyone who's tuned in all over the world right now, God. And I pray, Lord, that you would save someone today, set someone free today, heal somebody, deliver somebody in Jesus' name. God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You, Lord, are my strength and, and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. So we're going to, uh, I know I hadn't been uh, teaching much Christmassy type stuff except for Wednesday. So we're going to go to um, Matthew chapter 2. Everybody go to Matthew chapter 2. And I think I'm just going to read verses uh, 9 to 11. We're talking about the, um, when the, the wise men came to see Jesus. And there's some good stuff in there that I want to share with you this morning. I also want to try to teach you some stuff that maybe you didn't know, some stuff that we just take for granted. Amen. You know, I always want you to leave here a little smarter than you came. I want you to have some new information, have the ability to be able to tell somebody what the Bible really says. Amen. So uh, Matthew 2, and I'm going to read, yeah, just verse uh, 9 to verse 11 into your hearing and uh, for you on for those of you online it'll be on the screen and it says uh, I, I'll read the Christian Standard Bible is what I got in front of me it says after hearing the king they went on their way and there it was the star that they had seen at its rising it led them until it came and stopped above the place where the child was that's Jesus when they saw the star, they were overwhelmed with joy. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and falling to their knees, they worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So reads the word of God. Our topic today for discussion, family, is gifts fit for a king. Gifts, presents fit for a king. I was thinking about that and my wife will tell you, and she's probably right, she tells me that I'm a hard person to buy presents for. Sure? She, she often tells me, she, you see, 
that I'm a hard person to, to, to buy presents for. And that's in part because I really don't need much. I just don't feel like I'm missing very much. I have most of what I need. The other reason is that when I do need something, I just get it. So she tells me that as much as she loves me, she, she wonders, is what I'm giving you good enough? Mm -hmm. Does it make you happy? Because she doesn't want to just get me a gift that, that, so that she can say, oh yeah, I got him something. Mm -hmm. She wants to give me something that's going to make me feel how much she loves me. That's important. That's the real reason that we give gifts to each other, unless you got some kind of a thing, you, some kind of a psychological thing you're working on where you just like to see people smile and you don't care if they like the socks and the fruitcake you got them. But, but most of us, we want to see, we want, the, we want to bless the person we're giving the gift to. And um, so what we did this year is Ashley and I filled out surveys <laughs> about like our interests. And we've been together 10 years. And we've been together and we filled out these surveys about our interests and our, uh, the things that we liked and what kind of music we liked. And we knew that about each other, but it was good to see it on paper. So then I could use that as a guide to figure out what I should get her for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I say all that to say, what do you give to the God who created everything? Mm. What is a good gift to give to God who made everything. Right. You want to talk about someone who's hard to shop for. It really isn't me. <laughs> I mean, if you're thinking about what do I give to God? And, 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 then there play, and then scripture tells us that he already has everything. Listen to this. Psalm 24 and 1 says the earth and everything. The, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Mm -hmm. They that dwell therein. That God owns everything. What do I give to a God who has access to everything. Right. Ah. Well, I'm telling you that the one thing that God desires of you is you. If you want to give God, if you want to give the people of God, if you want to give the kingdom of God something that is worthwhile, give yourself. Return to God the investment that he's made in you. Mm -hmm. And I don't want anyone to come away thinking and I don't want you to start off thinking that you don't have anything good to offer God because you absolutely do. Amen. You are valuable and what you offer God is valuable. And I want to. So, so in the same way that Ashley and I exchanged, you know, uh, exchanged our list about what is a good gift to give me. I want to help you to do the same thing with what God might want. And I want to show you how Jesus is giving us these kind of gifts and we're giving them right back to him through the story of the Magi. Amen? Amen. So listen, amen, I love that, I love that. So, we, so in here we find in Matthew chapter two, we've got the, 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 the Magi. Now sometimes we hear them referred to as the wise men. I've seen other translations that call them kings. And uh, I, now listen, I'm gonna break up your nativity scene a little bit. So if you have one at your house, don't trip. I'm not going to go over there and see it and see if your nativity scene is biblically accurate after this. If you want to worship God and you want to celebrate the birth of Jesus, however you do it, however many wise men and however many lambs and goats and donkeys you got over there is good. OK, I'm not tripping about that. I'm not a legalistic type person. Amen. If my birthday is in April, but if y'all wanted to celebrate my birthday in September, I'm fine with that. Amen. So I think that it's a good time to worship God and to praise his son, however you do it. But in the interest of teaching the scripture as it's accurate, I want to show you a few things. All right. As we're talking about how these gifts came to Jesus. Amen. Amen. So the first thing that we take a look at here, it, we'll find it in Matthew 2 in uh, verse 1. It says the first thing it says in verse 1, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the days of King Herod, wise men from the east arrived in Jerusalem. So when we see the nativity scene and we see all those cute plays and there's these guys who come up dressed like kings and they are right there with all the shepherds and the little baby lying in the manger off top. That's not what the Bible says. In Luke chapter two, remember there are shepherds who were out there, right? There were shepherds and, and they were and, and they saw a star and then angels came and sang to them and told them that the Messiah had come. Glory be to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, you know, peace, goodwill towards men. Right. Well, that happens before the wise men even make it to Jerusalem. Uh -huh. So the wise men get there 
And it says that they, they get there during the, uh, after Jesus was already born, the wise men come to Jerusalem. And it says in the Bible that they are wise men from the east. Mm -hmm. And biblically, it doesn't say exactly where they're from, so I'm not going to tell you that I can pinpoint their, their origin, but whenever the Old Testament prophets and the rest of the Bible refer to the east, they talked about the area of like Syria and um, Babylon and Persia, like Iran and that area. So we're talking a couple hundred miles that these wise men are, are following the star trying to get to Jerusalem. So then we got to get to who are the wise men. So there's this long journey they're taking. We're going to get to that. But who are these magi? Are they kings? Are they wise? Are they priests? Who are they? Magi in the Bible often refers to people who are spiritual, but not people who are necessarily believers in the one true God. Mm. In that, that same word you find in Acts, where the disciples are running up on people who are sorcerers, that same word is magi. And we get a hint of that because they're coming from the east. And you know that in Babylon, they worshiped whoever the king was. They worshiped all kinds of different gods, Baal, and they had Asherah poles and all that. So even though they didn't necessarily believe in the one true God, they still were following his star. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know, family, that you have influence over people even if they don't believe like you believe yet. So these, these, so these men, they've come from the east. So in the area of Syria, in the area of Persia, in the area of Babylon, and you can imagine, imagine how amazed, and, ama and their astrologers is the way that the, the Bible puts them forth, they were following the star. You know, the, the Jews were captive in Babylon for some time. So they learned a little bit about Jewish culture and Jewish tradition and Jewish religion. But then they kind of mixed it in with their astrology. But that, but that led them to Jesus. I'm telling you, however you get to him, as long as you get to Jesus, you're going to be all right. These guys got there following a star. Some of you got there because you came out of jail. Some of you found him because you got out of rehab. Some of you found him because you got kicked out of your house. Some of you found him because you were dead broke. But the most important thing is that you get to Jesus. So they, so, so they come together and they get to Jerusalem and they get to uh, Herod, who's the ruler of that area. And they say, hey, we've been following the star and the Jewish tradition says that the Messiah is going to be has, has been born in this area. And Herod, who thinks that the Messiah is coming to take him out of military and political power, says, "Ooh, tell me all about him. I want to go worship him. Where will he be? What area is he coming from? So they look at the scriptures and um, they tell him, well, he's going to come out of, Beth, out of Bethlehem and the land of Judah. So, he's, so he's gonna, that's where the ruler is coming from. That's where the Messiah is coming from. That's where he, he is. So he said, well, go, go to Bethlehem and, and find him for me. And when you get there, come back and tell me where he is so I can worship him. Now, Herod really wanted Jesus dead. You know, and, and because as a Roman ruler, he thought that Jesus was coming to take his power. Remember, the Jews, though, they thought that he was coming to do the same thing. A lot of times we have Jesus a little mixed up about what his actual goal is. So the so the Magi come to uh, they go to Bethlehem to, Na to Nazareth to where they well Bethlehem, where they're looking to find the Messiah. And the other thing I want you to to recognize I'm still messing with your nativity scene, I know, is that the Bible says that they came, it, they followed the star to where the child was, and they entered the house. Said so they entered the house. So this is not the inn. This is not the manger. This is a house. This is after Jesus has already been born. The other clue that we have that we can tell that, that, that Jesus has already been born is that the, the Bible doesn't call him a baby. Uh -huh. It calls him a small child. Mm -hmm. And those are different. As a matter of fact, so, uh, so uh, in Luke 2, for example, when Luke 2 talks about when the shepherds came and they saw the baby lying in the manger, that's one word. But in Matthew 2, it calls him a young child. Young child means toddler, someone who is between the ages of maybe like six months and two-ish. Mm -hmm. So they see Jesus a little later in his life. Doesn't take away the meaning of anything. I just want you to know the truth matters. So I want you to understand what the scripture is actually saying. And the other thing that I want you to see 
is that is that there's nothing in the Bible that says there's three of them. I mean, you're looking right here with me, right? After Jesus was born, wise men, wise men, wise men, wise men. There's nothing that suggests in scripture that there's three of them. And I think that's because it says they gave three different gifts. So we just have that picture in our mind. I'm giving gold, next guy's giving frankincense, the next guy's giving myrrh. But that's really not how it happened. Now, I told you, let's go back and think about this. These are powerful, religious officials who are traveling hundreds of miles. You really think the three of them are going to do that by themselves? Well, actually, the groups of, of Magi in that time, they traveled in groups of 12 plus security. So there's nothing that I'm not, I'm telling you, I'm just, I, so I'm not going to nobody's house and look at your nativity scene and be like, you need nine more wise men. But it's, but I'm just telling you the way that it worked then. Amen. So there are, the number of them is not what's important, but I think it's important that you understand what the Bible really says, right. rather than what our, what culture shows us that it is. Because if you can see that, if you can see that months ago, they were, there were shepherds who were worshiping him. And then all this time later, there were people who traveled all this way to worship him some more. I think that's even more compelling than just this chance meeting Amen. that everybody came together at one time that Jesus is just being overflowed with worship because the world's been waiting on the Lamb of God who's come to take the sin from the world. And the other thing I want you to see about these Magi is that they came, but they didn't come empty handed. Mm -hmm. They came and they had purposed in their mind. They had made sacrifices. They had in their mind. They decided when I come to Jesus, I have to give something to him. None of them came empty handed. So you asked me as we're going to get into our points today. What do I give God? You just said, Dave, he made everything. So number one that I think you can that you can offer God that we see in this text. The thing that you can offer God that can that will please him. That'll be a, a good gift is that you can offer God a submissive gift. What do you give God who's got everything? You submit yourself to him. You make your priorities God's priorities. Mm -hmm. I ask, Lord, help me to want what you want me to want. Mm -hmm. I, I, I pray, God, that you would help me to not see myself more highly than I ought. I pray, God, that when I come before your presence, I recognize how great you are and how far you've come to save me and how and, and how I don't deserve what you've done for me. And I'll come to you submissive. These are religious leaders in their area, wise men, magi. They had a, a whole security detail that traveled hundreds of miles if they snapped their finger. But somehow they were traveling these hundreds of miles following a star, which means they couldn't travel during the daytime. Uh -huh. Talk about being submissive, trying to get to God. They, they, they couldn't even travel during the daytime. The only time that they could see the star, I'm looking out right now, I can't see stars. The only time you can see a star is at night. So however long their journey would have taken them normally, it took twice as long because they had to stop during the daytime. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you the first thing that you can, if you want to be submissive to God, put a little uh, A under number one, is God needs your availability. Yeah. Woo! God yeah. needs your availability. Yeah. Sometimes the best ability you can give to, to God is not your preaching, it's not your praying, it's not your running around, it's not your speaking in tongues, it's your availability. Mm -hmm. Like, there's nothing that you got, I know y'all praying and y'all out here doing your thing, but the, mo but the thing that made me want to get up and run around the church seven times is just seeing you. Mm -hmm. And just like, the, just like the Magi, yeah, 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 just like the Magi, you guys, it's raining outside. Y'all can't see this Facebook and YouTube. It's raining outside. It's cold. You had to press your way to be here. Mm -hmm. We had to come and bring all the stuff that was at our house to the church. We had to find a way, but it was like, if I could just get to Jesus, if I can yes. just offer him me, if I can just show him I'm available. One yes. song says, Lord, I'm available to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it, you're, you can give a submissive gift to God of availability just make yourself available to him and that's what the magi did and paul says it like this in romans 12 and 1 he says brother i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service god says that's what i that's what you're supposed to do 
I, I know I have everything, but I've given you free choice and I'm asking you to give you back to me. Yes. Will you be available to me? Will you show up? Will you press your way through? Will you take twice as long to get to the place because you know the Messiah is waiting on you? Amen. And I know that the reason that I give Jesus availability is because he's available to me. That's why I give it to him. Remember, Jesus told the disciples in Matthew 28 and 18, remember, uh, uh, all, all authority has been given to me. And now go and make disciples and baptize them and teach them what I taught you and, and do all that. Then he says, and lo, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the earth. So you want to offer a submissive gift of availability. Lord, I'm here. The next thing that they offered him under that same, uh, under, still under number one, what else do you give in submission to God? You give him adoration. Uh -huh. Now, I just told you that these guys did not necessarily worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. But something about them made them on camels and on foot and having to finance this thing and having to get their gifts together and protect their gifts from raiders and bandits in the desert and all of that. And they said, I still got to get there there's something about him and it says that when they got there in uh in verse 9 and 10 it says they got there and the first thing they did is they worshiped him yes. they worshiped yes. him they got in the presence of the lord they got in the presence of the messiah this little boy you know maybe a year old maybe two years old but they saw him and after all that time of following him they realized in a moment that it was worth it mm -hmm. he's real We've been following this star that was leading us to him, but now we've got him face to face. Yeah. And, 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 and I don't know if they had a conversion in that moment. The Bible doesn't say, but it does say that they worshiped him, that they, that they, that they fell down and they worshiped him. They submitted themselves in adoration to Jesus. And have you pr and I wonder what they must have been thinking. There's a song that says, I can only imagine mm -hmm. what it'll be like. When that day comes, when, I, when, I'm standing, when I'm surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I sing in your presence on your knees? Will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Yes, God. However you do it, do it. I don't know if, they, if, if one worshiped on his knees. I don't know if one of them laid on his back. I don't know if one laid on his face. I don't know how they worship, but I do know. They worship. Mm -hmm. that if, have you practiced what it's going to be like when you run up on Jesus? Have you yeah. practiced how have you gotten your speech together? Maybe, but you'll probably run out of your mouth the moment that you see the glory in his face and you see the love that's surrounding him. But practice it. That's what we're doing down here anyway. Uh -huh. That's what we're doing down here. We're practicing because in heaven, that's all we're going to do is worship in heaven we're just going to be surrounded by love there won't be no more tears there won't be no more crying there won't be no more dying so now yeah so now i get to practice worshiping god through adversity uh -huh. because when you get to heaven there ain't going to be no 500 mile journeys trying to get to him you ain't got to follow a star everywhere you look he's going to be there so you get to worship him in a different way now because he because you got to press your way into your worship you. once you press your way into your worship come on now let me just give you what david said i'm gonna move on psalm 34 says i will bless the lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth my soul shall make her boast in the lord the humble shall hear thereof and be glad Woo, and that's good yeah but then he says oh magnify the lord with me and let us exalt his name together so you want to offer God something that 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 will make him smile, something to make him look down with love and gratitude. Offer him a submissive gift. Submit yourself to him. Yeah. Number two, you offer God a substantive gift. Ooh, now y'all. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you should give something to God that is precious to you. Yeah, it says that. So one of the things that because because remember, do you remember David in the, uh, uh, when David was buying the threshing floor? When he was getting ready to make the tabernacle of God, he was getting ready to build the temple. He came up on the temple uh, on the guy who owned the area he wanted to build the temple. And, and, and David and, and the guy who owned it said, I'll just give it to you, king. You're doing this for God. I'll just give it to you. And David said to him, I don't want to I don't want to give God anything that costs me nothing. Mm. He said, so I'll pay you full price for it. 
because I don't want to give God something that's worthless to me. He says, no, 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 no. I want to give God something valuable. So the first gift that we hear the Magi give is gold, mm -hmm. a substantive gift. Gold in the Bible represents, and you see gold, there's gold all over the tabernacle. There's gold all over the ark. There's gold throughout. And it's one of the most valuable commodities that we've been using for trading since the beginning of trading. Now, all the silver is God's and all the gold is God's. I get that. But but what I need you to understand is that there is a, there is something there's something there's a deeper level of worship when you come to God with an expectation to give rather than to just receive. Uh -huh. If you don't believe me, then you, you do know in John three sixteen we studied that not long ago, it says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son when God he loved us so he gave now imagine imagine if God said I love you but uh for the sins of the world I'll give you uh I'm not gonna give you my only son I'll give you an angel maybe or I'll give you a squirrel you know I'll give you I'll give you a ram but God he, his love came from the fact that he gave him something that cost him something it cost Jesus everything so so what we find is that the, the the magi here and remember there's not three of them it's not one or the other they're they're all these are the gifts that they have pulled together to give jesus and i know you're thinking what does a baby need with gold uh -huh. what's a baby need gold for what they need all that i don't want so so do you need to know that remember later in this same chapter herod said come back and tell me where the baby is and i want to go worship him when he really wanted to kill him don't you know that the gold that they gave Jesus is a part of what allowed them to go and run away to Egypt and stay for two years while they waited on Herod to die so Jesus could come back and be and be born and, and live and grow up in Nazareth like this, like the prophecy said he was supposed to. And he'd be able to come into his ministry coming as a Nazarite, mm -hmm. like the scripture said. But if they never gave him gold, they would have had to find some way to finance that journey. So when you're giving, I just need you to know that as you're giving to God, you give something that's worth it to you and you find a place to give where you know that your investment has a good return. Uh -huh. And these wise men who didn't even know Jesus like that, who were following a star in astrology, they knew that they were sowing on good ground. Mm. So if you are in good ground, then it's a good idea to give something substantive. And then this is what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 9 and 10. Now, the one who provides seed for the sower and bread for food will also provide and multiply your seed and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You'll be enriched every way for all generosity, which produces thanksgiving to God through us. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. God, Paul says, I'll give a blessing to you if I can get a blessing through you. Mm -hmm. These wise men could have said, God, you can just make some gold show up. You are, you got it all. But they said, no, Jesus, you got a journey ahead of you. And we want to make sure that you can do it. That's why we ask. That, that's why ministries ask that you support what we're trying to do so that we got so we so as we are growing that we, that we'll have we'll have the facilities to do more and greater mm -hmm. for the kingdom. So I'm not just asking you to just to, to enrich me. I'm OK. We fine. I ain't talking about that. I mean, but what about what will you offer to the kingdom? Amen. What will you put before Jesus and whatever you give to him, which is between you and him, if we're being honest, ought to be something that costs you something. Mm -hmm. It ought to be something worth protecting. It ought to be something that is that's worth the fight. Mm -hmm. Something that's worth defending in the desert night after night. Right. Something that's worth. The head that's worth the weight. It means you maybe got to let go of some stuff because uh -huh. you got to make room for what you got to give Jesus. But that's OK, because God needs a substantive gift. Right. Number three, they gave him not only the, the, their presence, that submissive gift. They didn't just give him gold, the substantive gift. They gave him number three, a spiritual gift mm -hmm. called frankincense. Now, Exodus 30 and 34 tells us that frankincense is a key aspect of worship in the tabernacle. So we're going to talk about that at some point, some tabernacle teaching. My, my mentor, Bishop uh, Sean Smith, he's, he's a tabernacle aficionado, and it's good. And remember, the tabernacle was, was, the, was the way in the Old Testament how, things, how the people made themselves right with God, how they made atonement for their sins. 
And you remember the tabernacle had like an outer court and, a, and an inner court. And then it had the, the, the inner room. There was the holy of holies, the most inner portion where the spirit of God resonated. Well, frankincense was a part of the worship for God. And it tells us that, um, that, that when worship was going on and they were offering a sacrifice, the priest would burn frankincense to perfume the air. Mm -hmm. So it set the atmosphere. Frankincense was what they used to, 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 make the, to, to, make, to, to give you, the, to give you the, the, the feel of worship, to give you the feel of service, to give you the feel of the sacrifice that, God had been, that you were putting forth to God. Mm -hmm. And only the priest handled the frankincense and did what they needed to do with it. So I don't and I don't know if these men knew the significance of the stuff that they were giving, but mm -hmm. they, but they, but frankincense is also quite expensive. It is. But what I do know is that uh, is that you you can it, it's good for you to give God something that is a representation of you knowing who he is to you. Yeah. So they're giving God a spiritual gift. They're giving Jesus a spiritual gift. And that spiritual gift is frankincense, but they're offering a child something that only a priest is supposed to use. What you, what you giving a toddler something that's supposed to be in the, in, the, in the tabernacle? Why would you give a child something that's that holy? Why would you give a child that's something? Isn't it funny that when that Jesus comes in and you start doing stuff you wouldn't normally do, that he starts setting things right. He starts to, you, you, you'll start doing stuff that maybe doesn't make sense to you in the moment, but then all of a sudden you realize, no, they were giving him because, you know, Jesus, so is it weird to give a child frankincense? Maybe, but not this child. He wasn't just no child. He wasn't just another baby. He was, John called him the Lamb of God who came to take the sin from the world. And Hebrew, and the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews 4 and 14, therefore, since we have a great high priest who's passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. So they were offering, maybe they didn't know it, but they were actually offering some tabernacle worship supplies to the last high priest that would ever be born. So it might seem, that's why sometimes people will see your worship and they'll see your praise and they'll see you giving and they'll see you serving. And they'd be like, why are you out here doing all that for this little bitty white building on the side of the road in the country in Clydeville? And you say, you just don't see what I see. Mm. Now I'm offering a spiritual gift. It don't look on the outside. On the outside, it looks, come on. Come on. So on the outside, maybe that's what they see. But I know that on the inside of here is the beginning of a of a movement. I know that here the, that the spirit of God resides and maybe it's weird to you to give to, to, to give so much of myself into something that doesn't look like it. But I'm telling you, we are not that, that, that we already I can already see where God is taking us as a ministry. So I don't worry about making the investment. So when, when, it, when COVID came and shut us down, Ashley and I gave a spiritual gift. We said, no, we need to find a way to to make sure that the world can see what's going on at New Mount Zion. And I know we ain't had no website like that. And I know that we didn't have none of that yet, but I'm telling you that in my spirit, I just knew that we had to find a way to get it out there. And people would be looking like, well, you could probably just wait. That's a little church on the side of the road. They don't even, you know, they don't even got internet over there. So what's the problem? You, you could probably just, I said, no, 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 no. Uh, this is a spiritual gift I'm giving. This is to set the atmosphere. This is because, I, this is because, this is, this is based on what, what God has promised us, not based on what I see. So you might think it's weird for these magi to be giving a spiritual gift, a gift that is reserved for prophets to a child. Mm -hmm. But that's not what was going on at all. It's that he was, they were giving all of they had. They were giving this, sac, this spiritual gift to someone who had the capacity to accept it. Second Corinthians 2, 14 and 15 says, but thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. It's through us spreads the aroma of the knowledge of him in every place. Mm -hmm. Let me read that again. I, I think I got a Christian standard Bible here. Thanks be to God who always leads us in Christ's triumphal procession and through us spreads the aroma of knowledge of him in every place. For to God, we are the fragrance of Christ. Mm -hmm. I believe though the, 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 new, the King James Version says we're a sweet savor mm -hmm. of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. You want to make God happy? You want to give him a gift that, that is worthy of him and you want to see, you want to make him smile? Offer God a spiritual gift 
because what I see is temporary. But remember, the things that I don't see are eternal. I know that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So I'm sowing into my not yet. I'm giving God into my not yet. I'm giving God expecting to see the thing. And I'm telling you that if, if you can see it before you see it, when you see it, you'll see it. Yeah. If you can yeah. see it, if you can see it before you see it, when you see it, you'll see it. If you can see it in your spirit and know that, that the God who brought you through everything that you've been through is the same God who's sustaining you right now. And if you know that the God who's sustaining you right now, I know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and to call according to his purpose and that he would not withhold any good thing from me. So I can see it in my spirit because my past has proven it to me. My present let me know it's possible. So now I can see the future already. So that way when I get to it, I can grab it. Uh-huh. I'm not going to let it pass me by because that's spiritual. Mm -hmm. So I can give into. So, so it didn't weird for me for these men of power and men of prestige and men of accomplishment would be giving Jesus a priestly gift because he's the last high priest. It wasn't giving him what he what he needed right then. He probably needed a bottle or a toy right then. But he was a priest right. and they recognized who he was. So not only do you give a substantive gift, remember, that's just the gift that means something, has some value because Jesus needed that substance because they had to run to Egypt and hide out for a few years because Herod came down and said, kill every child who's two years or younger. Mm -hmm. Remember in the massacre of the innocents. That's the other reason that, you know, that Jesus wasn't no newborn, because he said after he conferred with the with the wise men, he said, OK, two years is about where we want to cut off killing all the babies. So we also they offered Jesus a substantive gift. Gold was of practical value mm -hmm. that they could use to get out of the country quickly and to live somewhere that was not familiar to them. Then you offer a, a, a so you, then you offer a spiritual gift. You give God out of your faith, out of your hope, out of the uh, so not out, no, not just out of your pocketbook, but out of your heart. Mm -hmm. And then and then the last thing that you ought to offer God is a sacrificial gift, a sacrificial gift. That's what they gave him, and that gift was called myrrh. Myrrh is another fragrant and expensive spice, but it's inextricably tied to the life and death of Jesus Christ. I'm gonna show you how, and then we're gonna, and then we're gonna get out of here. Come on. Now, myrrh, if you brought myrrh before I studied it to a baby shower, I would think you were weird. I would think you were a little strange, man. If you brought myrrh to a baby shower, this is the only child I think would be appropriate to give it to. You want to know why? What's wrong with that? Myrrh sounds nice. Myrrh is, a, um, is an expensive herb that has, watch this, pain-relieving qualities. Mm -hmm. So these men have traveled hundreds of miles following a star. They come before a baby. They lay gold in front of him. I can see that. Then they lay a priest's gift in front of him. And then they laid in front of the feet of this child Messiah, a pain reliever. Are you there with me? That, they, that there's something that you could tell that maybe, maybe they knew that, that he was bruised for our transgressions. Maybe he knew that he was wounded for our iniquity. Maybe he knew that the chastisement that was supposed to be on us was on him. And by his stripes, we would all be healed. But in the meantime, in the meantime, they needed to give God, they needed to give the Lord who was fully God and fully man some pain reliever. Mm -hmm. You know, he was born to suffer for your sins. He was born to suffer for mine. He was born to die for us. So they offered Jesus the sacrificial gift. That, and, and all I mean by that is that they offered him something that said, I see you, Jesus. Uh -huh. And I know that that must hurt. And if there's a little thing I can do to help. I will. So they put before this baby who probably hadn't known no real pain yet, mm -hmm. a pain reliever because they recognize who he was and what he was about to do. You want to show God gratitude, then let him know that you see how valuable the sacrifice that he made to you is. You, this isn't the only time that Jesus was offered this sacrificial gift of myrrh. They also offered Jesus myrrh at the end of his life. Uh -huh. Mark, 20, Mark 15 and 23 says that they 
put some myrrh in a sponge. Mm -hmm. Another translation calls it sour wine. More specifically, it's myrrh. Mm -hmm. And they offered it up to Jesus when he was on the cross. Mm -hmm. So he's being offered pain relief mm -hmm. as a child that he could that he that he wasn't he didn't have the capacity to receive. Mm -hmm. And then he rejected the pain relief on the cross. Because it wasn't what he was here. He wasn't here to be comfortable. He was here to be sacrificed. Yes. So they offered myrrh. So Jesus receives myrrh three separate times in scripture. One is as a child, giving a child a pain reliever. Just think about what that must have been like as, as, as his mom was wondering. Why are you giving my baby morphine? Mm -hmm. Why are you giving my baby Tylenol? It's valuable, but what's the significance? And then they gave it to him on the cross because mm -hmm. people, the same people who heard him knew that there was, he must have been in pain. But there's a third time that Jesus received myrrh. And it was when Nicodemus in John 19 and 39 used myrrh to treat the body of Jesus mm -hmm. after his crucifixion. Mm -hmm. Because myrrh is not just a pain reliever. It's also an embalming chemical. Yeah. So, 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 so what we, so, 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 and God is not just a pain reliever, uh -huh. but he's an embalmer who stops the death process. Uh -huh. So, so they gave Jesus, who gives a baby a pain relieving embalming chemical? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except that they weren't giving it to the child, they were giving it to the Christ. So they knew that there was going to be a time in his life he would need the pain relief. And they laid it before him. And I don't know if they knew, but somebody must have. Because, you know, I know God works all things together for the good. Sometimes people don't have to know they're blessing you like they're blessing you. Right. God will make your enemies your footstools. No matter what they believe, they were still giving him what he would one day need. Mm -hmm. And even at his birth, the best gift that you can give Jesus was recognizing and showing appreciation for his death. That I know that God, you didn't, you weren't born here to make me comfortable. And I wasn't born to be happy. I was born to reflect your light, your glory in the world. So because I recognize that, I got some stuff I want to give you. Uh -huh. As I close and we get ready for, um, to get you guys out of here, we're going to have uh, we're going to have a, we're going to have the ministry of giving after this. How about that? I hope you're incentivized. And then we're going to have a, and we're going to amen. And we're going to share in the Lord's Supper. Amen. And um, and we're going to do that here together. But I want I want to read you this scripture and then I want to put out. Um, I want to give you we'll just give you something to chew on as we go home. Psalms 116 and 12 says it like this. How can I repay the Lord? For all the good he has done for me. I'll take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. How do I repay the Lord for everything he's done for me? I give him something valuable. Mm -hmm. I give him something that's got some substance. I give him something that cost me something because he gave me everything. He who wouldn't even deny him, he wouldn't deny the world, his only begotten son. I got to give him something valuable. Then I got to offer him something spiritual because he knew that even on the cross while he was dying, he called out, forgive them, Father. They don't know what they do. He even had the audacity to while they were trying, while they were killing him to say, it's finished. And into your hands, I commend my spirit. Mm -hmm. You got to be giving spiritually, don't, not just out of rote rehearsal. God loves a cheerful giver, somebody who recognizes that what they give is valuable and is worthy. And then you offer a sacrificial gift. You let Jesus know, as Psalm 16 says, that I repay him by taking up the cup of salvation. If you want to repay God for all that he's done for you, make his sacrifice worth it. Accept the gift of God through Jesus Christ, the salvation that he's made available to you and to all of us. You don't do God any favors by saying, I'm not worthy. I don't want to do that. I don't deserve it. I know you don't deserve it. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He knew you were unworthy. 
He knew you could never live up to it. He knew that you were gonna make mistakes. He knew that you were gonna be nothing but problems. But he did it anyway. So I pray that you get, just get in your mind that yes, there is something that I can give him. I can give him me. For all that I am, I can give him me. It may not be all that I wish it was, but it's all that I got. I wish I had more to give, but God, take all that I am. I'm just this, I'm just this earthen vessel, God, but once you put some treasure inside of me? And then if you put treasure in me, as my cup runs over, I'll pour it out on somebody else. If you, if, if you let your light shine through me, I promise I won't put it under a basket, but I'll let my light shine for you. God, I don't have much but you can have all that I am. You can have all of my substance. You can have the spiritual. You can even have the sacrificial gift that I have. And those are gifts that are fit for a king. Amen. 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 So let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your time that you spent with us today. Father God, I thank you for my friends and family who come out here to worship with us, God. I pray that you said something to them that would change them, inspire them, and give them hope to go on just a little further. I know, Lord God, there's somebody out there, whether they're in this parking lot or they're out there, wherever they are in the world that doesn't know you, Jesus, and I pray they would come to know you. I pray, God, that they would come to know you as the Lord of their life, their sacrificial lamb, the partner of their sins. For the one who strayed, I pray that you would help them to find their way back. Let them know that you've already paid the price, that they're good enough in your sight. And I pray, Father, that if there's somebody who needs a church family, even on these church grounds, that they would find, that they would choose to worship with New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, the place they can grow in grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ, where everybody's somebody in Christ Jesus. So, Lord, do what you need to do, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. We can. So let's. Um, amen. So let's get ready. So I'll say this. If anybody does need to make a decision, you need someone to pray for you. You need someone to uh, to, to help you. If you're here right here right now in this parking lot, make sure that uh, as you're receiving the Lord's Supper and you're giving, you're, do, you're doing your ministry of giving, that you let them know that you need to talk to me. And we'll put our masks on and we'll social distance and we'll pray and we'll do whatever we need to do. And if you're watching this online, then you can um, email me and email us at uh, pastorcollinsnmz at gmail.com and let me know I had an experience and I need to talk to somebody about it. This is a good time to do that. Amen. So just because we're doing things a little different doesn't mean that we can't find a way to, um, to get Jesus to you. So whether you need to be saved, you need to recommit your life, you need to rededicate your life to Jesus, or you need to join this ministry, we're here for you. We want to do it for you right now. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, Deacon, and Deacon Woods has got some business cards that have our church information on it. You can probably get a bunch of them and give them a few. So, that we, so you guys, if people ask, hey, where do you go to church? And what are you all about? You can hand them out and they can and invite somebody to come along with you. Amen. Let's prepare for... Um, for the Lord's Supper, I'm going to pray over this and, and we're going to, as it's going out, I'm going to read you a scripture about it and we're going to do that together. Amen? Amen. Amen. So God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your, for your love. I thank you for, uh, for your spirit. I thank you for your guidance. Today, God, more than anything, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who suffered and bled for our sins, God. And I thank you that you left us a way that we could commemorate him in this, your supper. So as we partake of these elements, Father God, I pray that, that we wouldn't do it unworthily, God, but we would do it understanding that as we take this bread, that, we are rep that it represents your body that was broken for us. That we take that cup, Lord God, that represents the blood that you shed for us. You said that as often as we do it, that we're, that we are, that we're celebrating you. We're preaching a sermon by having a meal. So I pray, God, that you would strengthen us, that you would use us, that you would allow this, this meal to give us the strength to run on a little further. Bless it and, and anoint us for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Okay, I bet that's enough, I think. All right, so just roll your windows down and let Deke come in, uh, and serve you, please.
And Deacon Johnson is going to make his way around. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Deacon Johnson is going to make his way around to receive your tithes and your offering. Uh, if you're online and you want to um, and you want to give tithes and offerings, if you're online, you can do that. Um, we've got a bunch of different ways that you can. Uh oh, did the slide fall off? We'll see if we can get that slide to you. You can give. Um, we'll get all that. Yeah. There it is. Cool. We'll put that on the screen and we'll tell you. If you're online and you want to give, you can do that. Um, you, can, you can mail that to the church at P.O. Box 544, or you can uh, Lake Park, Georgia, 31636, or you can do Zelle and online giving. It's 229-292-2757. Uh, so we'll get more ways to you to do that. But um, for those of you who are here, you can just, uh, you can just give whatever you need to to our, uh, to our esteemed deacons. And... Uh, you may, yeah, we, let's, let's, let's make sure that we give God a portion, that we return a tithe and a generous offering. Malachi 3 and 10 says, return your tithe to the storehouse, that there'll be meat in my house. And then he says, try me. Prove me that I won't, that I won't open up the windows of heaven and give you a blessing you don't have room to receive. It's the only place in scripture that God says, don't believe it, just try it. Try it. I've given you everything. Try it. Let's see. Amen. Amen. To those of you who are online, go ahead and be preparing your elements. Where the deacons will be back in just a moment, and we're going to be able to. Uh, we'll do this together. Um, I'm going to be reading from First Corinthians, twelve and twenty-three. First Corinthians twelve and twenty-three is what I'm going to read. It's the Apostle Paul teaches us what the um what these what these mean and why we why we why we celebrate celebrate this sacrament of uh of the lord's supper of communion i'm just so excited that we're doing that we get to do communion again together guys i just i, I hope that you're as you're even looking at it preparing it peeling a little top off of that getting a little wafer that that's as you look at it you're knowing that jesus made a sacrifice of his body for you a sacrifice of his blood for you and every time we do it, I'm saying, yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I agree. Yes, Lord, I receive it. I don't deserve it, but I'm thankful. Yes, Lord. I'll read 1 Corinthians 12 and 17 to you while the deacons are, are finishing up. It says, now in giving these instructions, I don't pray, I don't, I do not praise you since you come together, nor the better, for, for, but for the worse. First of all, when you come together as a church, the, no, the, I hear there are divisions among you, and in part I believe it, but there must also be factions among you that are approved that may be recognized among you. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to just eat the Lord's Supper, for in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of others, and one is hungry and others drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat or drink in that you despise the church or God to shame? So, so Paul says, don't come together uh, with malice in your heart. Don't, don't do this with divisions among you. Don't let this moment be one that you, that, you, that you cleanse yourself of all that stuff that you brought in that would stand between you and God. Don't let anything get between you and God. Paul said to the church at Corinth, I know y'all got some problems and people are beefing and everybody's not getting along. But before we do this, let's make sure that we're all on one accord. Amen. So let's clear our hearts and minds. You're not eating this for somebody else. This is for you. This is for you. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And, uh, Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Good morning. Hey, hey, hey. Amen. I will. I will. I had one in there, but I guess I can get in. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Sure. You want me to go back to my car and get one? Oh, you, can take, you can take this one. Go ahead. Here. You go ahead and take it. <clears throat> Everybody good there? Amen. Amen. Well, let's. Um, so let's prepare the elements, give you a little cup, a little shake, amen, and uh, let's get these together so we can do them. Be careful. 
they should come apart just fine. So, uh, and uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and 23 says, For I received from the Lord that which, is also, which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night he was betrayed took the bread, and we had given thanks, he broke it, and said, Eat this, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And let's all drink together. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So we would just ask that those of you who are here, please keep your cups, your kits. In the, in the COVID-19 spirit, please keep them and take them home and dispose of them in a sanitary way so my deacons don't have to be up there getting stuff that y'all have been drinking out of. Amen? <laughs> so let's pray. Let's pray over, uh, over this service and this offering. I also want um, to, to let you know that I know you can't see it, but we have someone who is, uh, who's chosen to join the church today who's here in our parking lot. So, so in the, so yeah, 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 yeah. So in the middle of a pandemic, we're productive. Amen. So I don't want to, so I'm not tripping about it because it's spiritual for me. It's spiritual for me. Amen. We're productive even in a pandemic. So let's pray over all of those wonderful things and over this offering and over everything today. So y'all can go on and have some uh, post-church chicken. Amen. That's why maybe that's just me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh God, we thank you so much. God, you are so worthy. You are amazing. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for meeting us here, God. Thank you for the technological advances that allow us to come together this way, Father God, to broadcast to the parking lot with no speakers and to the, to the world with no wires. Yes, God, God, that you found a way to do it, Lord. Thank I thank you, Lord. you, Lord, that you said your word would never return to you void, but it will always accomplish what you set out for it to do. And we're sitting in the middle of that with a new member added to our roles yes, in God. the middle of the rain, in the middle of a pandemic, yes. where we're sitting in our car that you are growing this church. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So God, I want to thank you for the sacrificial gift that you've given us and that we sat together, we could come together and just recognize that we could commune together and eat of your, eat, eat, eat your feast together, Father God, because you really did break, allow your body to be broken for us. You really did shed your blood for us. Without the shedding of blood, there would be no forgiving of sins. Yes. So I thank you for your blood, Jesus. I thank you for your blood, Jesus. And then, Lord, I want to thank you for, for those who, 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 who heard the word and they responded, those who, who came and brought a gift to you, Father God. I Thank pray God. that as they're sowing their seeds, Father God, that you would multiply it, that you would bless it, some 30, some 50, some, some 100 fold, Father Thank God, that you would show them they've sown into good ground, Father God, that you would grow this ministry, grow our influence, and you would allow us to be expansive and change this entire world. So do whatever you need to do, God. You fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves. So take everything that your people have given today and increase it. Increase, Lord. Yes. Lord, we love you. Love you Lord. We thank you. We praise Amen. you. We honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. All right. Well, for you, those of you online. Oh, yes. A amen. And, and remember, we got Bible study on Wednesday. Bible study on Wednesday. I don't remember what I'm talking about. I got too excited. Who? Who is, who is Jesus? Uh, Wednesday, we're going to talk about who is Jesus in John, in John chapter 1, 1 to 5. Who is Jesus? So uh, we are, let's take a look at, make sure you read John 1, 1 to 5. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. We go, who is this Jesus that we're celebrating leading up to Christmas. Do you, do you know him? Do you know who he is? Are you ready? Do you know who he, what he's done for you? Amen. So we're going to um, Wednesday at six o'clock, we'll be doing it back at the house. We're going to only do this every so often. Let this pandemic, let this death angel pass us by and then we'll get back to normal. But thank you all for coming here. Thank you so much for letting us see your beautiful faces and hear your wonderful horns and just feel like we're not alone in our living room with our dogs for a little bit. Man, listen, the best is yet to come New Mount Zion. And to all of you, Make sure you connect. If you see this ministry is something you want to be a part of, you better holler at us. I'm telling you right now, this is the time. Catch us before we blow. Man, you can catch us when we blow up. That's all right. You can do it whenever you need to. And thank you for those who are bringing cleaning supplies. Thank you so, so much. 
Look, we love you guys. And uh, to those of you on Facebook and YouTube, we, we love you and honor you for being here. Y'all have a great night, and we'll see you on Wednesday. Amen?